Give us the meaning of this particular data. Give us the meaning of this trend. What yeah. are some things we can do about this? That, yeah. the other thing? Yeah. Yeah. that forum with a different hat on, That's you guys. Right. Not Not Paul Brubaker, Chair of House on Revenue. Okay. Paul Brubaker, economist. I'm down with that all day long. This is and, a and, and that's, and that's, and that's yeah. because we, we have a, a long-held distinction between the fact that uh, tax policy is in one realm, yes. revenue forecasting, forecasting is another realm. Absolutely. And we're here in our capacity as revenue forecasters. We're representing the council. And it's, I didn't it's, realize that yeah, it's, it was so stovepipe. Or strict. we could actually get into another dialogue well, with so a different hat on. Well, so what happens is we have that informational briefing each January. Yeah, and you we guys show say, up, mm, and we, we do that as council members. <laughs> and then Pearl and, and Pearl Iboshi from yeah. DBED and Carl from uh, Bonham from UH typically are, are representing their own views and maybe go a little farther than we're willing to. But we never have the other hearing where we're talking about tax policy and, and we're invited legislative to policies given the numbers because that's what really my yeah. colleagues want to hear. I think there were two. So what? What yeah. about the numbers? What yeah. do we do about uh, it? And what would you do about it? What would yeah. we recommend? So you guys are willing to do that. Oh yeah. And, and, and at that point you're yeah. going to have five economists sitting and around the table. Ideas. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we won't agree. <laughs> I, can, I can assure you we won't yeah. agree. Well just like the legislature doesn't agree. But, well, but precisely. one thing, yeah. I, I want to commend you guys for being economists and that is one of the missing mindsets in the legislature. You know, God bless all the lawyers and the social workers, but we don't have business yeah. and micro and macro economics you know, in the legislature. This well, is a confession. Yeah, that's, not, that, that's, that, that's fair, that, though. It's a yeah. different way of thinking. And we should, as we represent all the people of Hawaii, we should also represent your discipline. And I don't think we represent well, that very well. You just need us. You just need input every once in a while from our wacky perspective, because it is a different way. So of you guys are not ready to run for office then? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> that was totally unrehearsed. Well. <laughs> hey, but, I, I was on the Tax Review Commission in the mid-80s, I was, uh, and uh, at, at that point our Tax Review Commission had even suggested that we should adopt the federal income tax base as our state tax base. Okay. Well, that means taxing retirement income, which mm -hmm. is now exempt. And I went to a session in Hilo where I had to defend the Tax Review, tax review Commission's policy <laughs> recommendation yeah. on, on this. Good luck with that. And I said, yeah. well, this is going to disabuse me of any idea that I'm going to be a politician in the future. Okay. So, you know, they threw tomatoes and other... Oh, yeah. it was a, yeah, it was a, but a testy having time. Having said that, if you put our other hat on, we will you know, make another Olelo show where we're not doing council on revenues and we'll happily... Yeah, more than, more than happy to talk yeah. about that, this. That, that to me is a finding, in fact, how we can do things better. And that was another yeah. set of questions and that I had. And I can name you five guys that are better than me, uh, that know more than me about this, that would be important to have in that and, and 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 Paul mentioned uh, before the Tax Review Commission. The Tax Review Commission uh, is something that you guys pay for every five or ten years. Mm -hmm. and. They, they do, do a, a wonderful job. amount of work. Yeah. A wonderful amount of work. We have work the that former chair as my colleague in the finance committee. Oh, okay. well, well, there you go. Representative I, Isaac Choi. Right? Okay. And what you need to do is you need to look at that stuff and, and see what their policy suggestions are because over the over yeah. the history of various tax review commissions, there are some really good ideas, tax policy. So ideas you guys would there. be open to an economic summit conference or something where we yeah, bring yeah. the best. Oh, we do that. We do Absolutely. that. Yeah. yeah. We do that as a professional organization, and I think we've seen you at those meetings yeah, as well. Yeah, we've come to a few. Hawaii um, Economic Association. We'd be happy to turn that around and, and um, participate with the set. With Another the hypothetical question. If you were to do it all over again, redesigning the structure and the functions of the Council of Revenues, would you change anything about it? Or, hey, the way it is, the way it works, the way you guys are chosen, the, the, the amount of time, the way you guys get along. I, would you? Is there anything you'd tweak or change? or? I have a couple ideas, but as with many ideas, they're not free. And so the, I think more, and I'm not talking about get, get, get paid. <laughs> Although I'll take know. that too. You just said you get gratis, <laughs> no pay. No, I think that the, the, the cost research the money. function of the tax uh. department um, could use more resources to hire um, more highly skilled individuals. Now they got a great crew over there but if there were more resources, they'd, they'd, they'd have an even better one. So that's not a criticism. I'm just saying more resources will get you more uh, and possibly better output. The second thing I would say is that, or, or that can be achieved different ways. It can be achieved collaboratively with the university, for example, so that the tax department per se wouldn't have to hire people, but would have resources to fund ongoing research. So that's another possibility. The, the second thing I would say, and this doesn't necessarily involve money, but Jack and I and the council sit at, at meeting after meeting, and we work pretty hard 
trying to understand how the general fund moves around, and that turns out to be about half the revenue picture. The other half of the picture is special funds, general fund non-tax mm. revenues, a bunch of other things that add up to a large amount of money, about the same the amount same as the general amount. fund. And those forecasts come up in a very granular form from a wide variety of managers and, and public service uh, coordinated by the Department of Budget and Finance. Um, and it seems to me that sort of one of the big vast areas of potential improvement is trying to get that part of the revenue stream forecast better. I'm not sure how to get there, mm. but I think there could be improvements such as having common sets of assumptions regarding interest rates and interest income. Um, anyway, it's, it's a so place. So better can, research or more research, better data would be a way if we could on tweak it. On one side it again, on yeah? the, in, in the Department of Taxation and then helping, so helping the Department of Taxation do a better job and then helping BNF. the Budget and Finance Department ah have a, a more coordinated way of, of allowing managers to think about what the outlook is and then making their forecast based on that. Comp this, this is a problem you see in many companies where different lines of business in a company will have completely different forecasts of the future. And so you have somebody in a planning department try to herd them together. Paul, you, you touch on one of the most frustrating things that I find as a legislator in that it's good to make policy based upon numbers, but oftentimes there are no numbers. It's anecdotal, yeah. it's yeah. warm and fuzzy, yeah. it's so-and-so said such and such. How do you make policy based upon seat of the pants assumptions? Well, we have to because well, there's got to be yeah. made. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can share the frustration, but it's where, as policymakers, we should have a lot more database going into our decision making, but we we're, don't. We're at a, an extraordinary moment in history where the cost of compiling and obtaining information is really, really low and it can be processed really, really fast, and very sophisticated analytics can be done today for not much cost at all. So I, I think- But you need the right people. You need the right people. In the right place. Generally younger than I am, and mm. it would serve you well to think about uh, how what, what the bang would be for your buck in deploying mm. resources in that direction. And technology. Uh, are either of you guys uh, twittering that we're now doing our LLO show? No, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I don't. Facebook I, I don't Twitter. I don't yeah, Facebook. I haven't, I haven't yet. You're not doing it. <laughs> no, no. My kids are on Facebook, and I think I've been told that if I get on it, they'll they'll do bad things to me. <laughs> oh, but yes, there are new channels for uh, the for the communication of the information we're talking about that we should all be thinking about, and hmm. new pathways for gathering information that can be informative to the types of decisions you're making. Jack, anything you'd add to that or just say? Well, I, I was going to uh, mention some, uh, the con constitution of the council itself. I, I, I think it's, it's a relatively good mix of um, academic types, uh, government types, and private sector types. I, I, would, I would like to see uh, a, a stronger presence uh, from the private sector primarily because they, they do provide sort of the grounding on what's going on uh, in the actual mm. economy. Um, and so I would, I would like to see probably a bit more representation from, uh, from the private sector. I share that. that in that when I go to Rotary, I talk to my Rotary buddies who've got shops in Waikiki and other places. You know, how you guys, well, like a couple of weeks ago, <coughs> When you said that the, the free fall of tourism has stopped, he, he told me then, he said, well, we've stopped falling and now there's a little, not a bounce, but a little bit of yeah. an up. And last week it was, well, hey, well, there's a trend line going up. So yeah. you're right, the, the, the guys on the ground, because I think sometimes you get true high level guys who don't have their ear to the ground. It's like when we were in the Peace Corps, we didn't know what was going on in that country. The guys in the embassy never got out, got their ear down to the ground and the yeah. people. Yeah, so yeah. I, that, that makes to me. a good point, yeah. yeah. So that, that okay. I think that would that would help us uh, to some extent, but I think the, the the things that Paul mentioned are probably even more important. 